Let me ask you a question. What is some common knowledge? Some knowledge that is so well known, so basic, that everybody knows it without question. You might think perhaps of 2 plus 2 equals 4, Gandalf is greater than Dumbledore, or that the Earth is round. Okay, maybe not that last one. However, one piece of common knowledge that definitely isn't contested is that YouTube movies are bad. As someone that has skimmed through the three Fred films for a video and watched reviews on several other ones, I can say with confidence at this point that there never has and never will be a good YouTube movie. And the latest in this long line of terrible films, Logan Paul's Aeroplane Mode, is absolutely no exception. Now hold up, I know what you might be thinking. I haven't heard anything about an upcoming Logan Paul movie. And you'd be right to ask that, because I hadn't heard about this either until it was released. In fact, I originally thought everyone was talking about The Thinning, but that came out two years ago. And it's also terrible. It turns out this movie, if you can even call it that, was filmed all the way back in 2016. At the time, Logan Paul even made behind the scenes videos about it on his channel. The Facebook and Twitter page for this movie were posting actively all the way up until about April 2017. And then all of a sudden, for literally no reason, they just stopped. And they've been radio silent ever since. It's like the entire movie was completely forgotten about. And honestly, that's quite a blessing. After two years of complete radio silence, the Facebook page, out of the blue, with no warning, posts on the 31st of July that the movie was coming out the following day. Sure enough, on the 1st of August 2019, Aeroplane Mode was released, and the following day, on the 2nd of August, they put a trailer on YouTube. Alright then. So the film opens with a parody of an aeroplane safety video. It's actually quite amusing, but then it's followed by a seizure-inducing opening title, and then the actual film starts. And to be perfectly honest, it's all downhill from here. The film opens with Logan Paul sitting on his computer talking to his internet girlfriend from Australia while masturbating. Disgusting! I'm pretty sure 90% of people just turned off at this point, because why would you want to see that but me? I didn't. I had to sit through this entire thing. What am I doing with my life? Out of nowhere, this kid bursts through the door. Uh, he's Mexican. I think he's a YouTuber. I don't really know or care. Essentially, the only reason he bursts in is to give Logan an excuse to act like a complete degenerate. And then he goes back to being horny. Oh my god, I think I'm gonna be sick. Logan then goes back to, uh, yeah, doing his stuff. And then, the demoness herself, Lele Pons, climbs through the window. She films Logan having a good time, Logan understandably freaks out at this, and then Lele Pons does what she does best. Screams like a banshee for absolutely no reason. From here, a load of people just randomly burst from the crevices of Logan's room, for no other reason than to advance the plot. They tell Logan about a rip-off vidcon that's going on in Australia, and ask if he'll go with them. Logan states that he won't go, because he's scared of flying. There's then some stupid flashback to explain this, and then everyone starts jumping up and down, and crashes through the floor, due to the termites, which are then shown... filming a porno. Yeah, I'm, I'm not making this up, this is actually the plot of the film. We're now about five minutes into this film. I know it feels considerably longer, but at about five minutes, we've already been shown just perfectly how the comedy and structure of this movie works. Loud equals funny, pain equals funny, and rude equals funny. That's it. That's how this entire movie works. Now, while being loud can just never be funny, slapstick and offensive humour can actually be quite funny if done the correct way. They've got to be done cleverly, there's got to be a bit of build-up for it, etc, etc. However, this film doesn't do any of that cleverly. It just kind of throws several of them at you as quickly as it can in the hope that you'll laugh. There's nothing clever, there's no build-up, they just happen and they're expected to be funny. Hey look, hey look everyone, uh, uh, Lely Pons, she's screaming, um, that's meant to be funny, y you've got to laugh at that. Oh look, hey look, there's, uh, there's Logan at his desk, um, having a wank, um, you're meant to laugh at that, 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 that's a joke, and oh look, oh they've all just fallen through the floor, you get it? It's funny, because they got hurt, um, just, Please laugh at it. Anyway, after falling through the floor, Logan explains again that he's not going to the convention, just in case you forgot him saying that under two minutes ago. 
And then, in less than three minutes, Logan just changes his mind. He doesn't change his mind because he could see his girlfriend. He doesn't change his mind because he could go to this wonderful VidCon experience. No, he changes his mind because his Mexican friend exclaims that he's a virgin and is desperate to get nailed. I'm not making this up. That is legitimately the reason he changes his mind. Alright, I know I'm gonna regret this. But let's do it! Yeah! Oh! 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 Yeah! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Oh! Hey, uh, uh, that was funny. Um, because someone got hurt. Time to say goodbye, old friend. One more time for old time's sake. No! I'm making this harder than it has to be. That's what I was hoping for! Ah! We then cut to the airport, everyone's checking in. It's supposed to be funny, but it isn't really. Die check. What? Why? Sir? I just have a laptop! You've been randomly selected by our advanced safety algorithm for an extensive anal cavity search. I have 911 reasons not to trust this guy. Caveman Casey Neistat gets a poorly acted cameo. He does an awful job, to be honest. His acting is about as wooden as this chair that I'm sitting on. I have, just a fun fact for you, I've got a stuffed toy dinosaur called Tyrone here. He could probably have done a better job than Casey Neistat. Oh, you can't like me! You can't make me! No! 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 Hey, hey guys, this, this bit's funny. Do you get it? Because they're all being loud. Now, do you remember how I said this film was made all the way back in 2016? Well, as a result of that, there are a load of extremely outdated jokes and memes in this film, all of which caused me to pause the film, scream at a wall, cry for several minutes, and then go back to watching this movie against my will. Um, yeah, that was my... That was my evening, how was yours? <laughs> hide your knives, hide your drugs, and hide your liquors, cause we searching everybody around here. I'm gonna break you like a new pair of sneakers, vans. Damn Daniel. Disgusting! Over the next few minutes, we're introduced to the pilots and the flight attendants, who are actual actors. They're not great, but they're a million times better than the YouTubers, mainly because, well, they can actually act. Vitaly, the Russian prank YouTuber, who is about as calm as Mount Vesuvius, is also introduced at this point as the villain of the film. He's wheeled onto the plane in some sort of mock Bane scene from The Dark Knight Rises, and the only reason he's on the plane is, of course, to advance the plot. Vitaly being wheeled on as some sort of mock Bane or Hannibal Lecter is actually an interesting idea, and in any other film, I'd find it quite amusing, but this is a Logan Paul film, and the rest of the film is just unfunny, loud jokes and poorly acted garbage. You can't just have one or two interesting ideas thrown in amongst all of that and hope that it'll save your film. It won't. And it didn't. Logan is then upgraded to first class for no other reason than to advance the plot. Here he meets potential love interest who is a bit quirky, a bit distant, and in all honesty extremely cliche. There's a love interest like this in every single bad comedy movie, and actually they're quite common in YouTuber movies as well. There's one in this film, there's one in this film, there's one in this film. Pretty sure there's one in this film as well. The pilots then ask everyone to turn on their aeroplane mode and for some reason everyone is absolutely outraged by this and refuses and that results in the pilots getting killed. <sighs> this film has got no thread. You turn off their cell phones! Everyone knows that you put your phone in airplane mode. Ah, oh, that, was, that was really funny, wasn't it? Do you get it? They referenced their own movie. Ha. Huh. What did you even say? From here on in, there's a load of filler scenes. They're not needed, they're completely pointless. They don't impact the plot in any way. You could remove every single one of these filler scenes and the movie wouldn't be affected in the slightest. In fact, if you took them out, it would improve the film because the runtime would be shorter. There's a montage of everyone taking selfies. Less than two minutes later, there's another montage of everyone doing Whatever the fuck this is. Some woman loses her baby for all of 30 seconds. Nothing really comes of it. Some man attempts to breastfeed said baby. That's supposed to be funny. Some child says something inappropriate. That's supposed to be funny. This girl is caught trying to steal booze. That's supposed to be funny. Take your brunette extensions, your skinny weird Selena Gomez lookalike bullshit. Go get on your phone and go find a cock to suck. Do you see that? 
That is the actor who plays this flight attendant breaking character and laughing because the script is so shit. And not only that, they kept this in. They didn't make him do another take, they didn't cut it out, they just kept this scene in the movie. And that proves to me, more than anything else, that every single stage of production for this film was a steaming pile of garbage. There are only two things of significance that happen in amongst all of this filler. Number one, a flight attendant and Logan Paul discover that the pilots are dead. Number two, Vitaly kills the only other person that can fly a plane and then proceeds to kidnap the flight attendants. That's basically all that happens. You're on a plane with friends and family when suddenly a loud mechanical bang interrupts what you thought was going to be a smooth ride. You're going down fast and need to think quickly. Here's what you can do to increase the odds of surviving the imminent crash. Number 5. Pre-flight preparations. Number 4. Bracing for impact. <laughs> Step 3. Don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> Step 2. How to find an exit. <laughs> Number 1. The aftermath. So that show is pretty nice, huh? Yeah. Yeah. From here, there's about 25 minutes left of this movie, but to be honest, you could finish it up quite easily in five. Everything from here on is just extremely stretched, so they can get it to a certain length and actually call it a movie, and it really does show. Vitaly kills one of the flight attendants, the Mexican guy from the start of the film realises he's going to die and tries to get nailed in a bathroom. Aren't you like 16? 17. The woman he's trying to get with dies, it's very ha-ha epically funny. And then Logan Paul saves the other flight attendant, rips his trousers off, fights Vitaly, who then dies, and then he and potential love interest land the plane. That's it. I think that took me about 30 seconds to explain, and for some reason this film decides to take 25 minutes to do it. That's how the plane lands, by the way. I didn't edit that at all. It's just... Beyond anticlimactic, to be perfectly honest. So Logan lands the plane with the help of a YouTube tutorial. He's then hailed as a hero, and then potential love interest fucks off. Logan gives a very sad look into the distance, and it probably made every 14-year-old fangirl shed a tear. Can we get five likes for the sad Logan fangirls? <laughs> so following this, Logan decides to completely abandon his internet girlfriend in exchange for a woman he just met on a plane. He drops his annoying Mexican friend off at his girlfriend's house instead, and his internet girlfriend, who was probably really looking forward to meeting her boyfriend, is perfectly happy to shag this desperate 17 year old Mexican instead simply because he has an accent. Alright, fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, Logan tracks down potential love interest. He didn't give her any contact details or a phone number or anything like that, so there is no possible way they could have ever found each other, but he just somehow manages to do it because the plot needs to advance. It's just lazy, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Oh, I love you, Jumper! Ha! You get it? That's funny. Because she screams. That's the end of the film, by the way. Uh, Logan and the Mexican guy just get nailed. Um... I've, I've got nothing. I don't know about you, I've just got nothing. <laughs> In summary, I hate everything about this film. I hate that it exists, I hate that I watched it, I hate that it somehow got a 6.6 .6 out of 10 on IMDB at the moment, and I think we can all agree that Logan Paul making this film, well it was a severe and continuous lapse on his judgement. Thanks very much for watching, um, like, share, subscribe, donate to my, um, my PayPal. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. This movie has completely drained me. I'm going to go for a lie down. Uh, while I do that, be sure to watch all my videos 27 times. Thanks, kids.